Welcome back to another episode of the We Live to Build podcast. Today I'm talking with Katarina Sokienko. She is the co-founder and chief business development officer for postaplan.app, a platform for helping companies manage their social media and marketing. We talked about how Gen Z is different and how you need to pay attention to them and what are the things that your company should be thinking about when trying to engage with them. In the beginning of the episode, I was maybe a little bit harsh with her, but only because I was trying to get the best out of her. Towards the middle and the end of the conversation, you'll get the feeling that it's a lot more friendly and conversational. While it's not a very long episode, I believe it's about 20 minutes of recording, it's packed full of information that will be helpful targeting Gen Z. I hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome to We Live to Build. My name is Sean Weisbrot, and I'm an entrepreneur, investor, and advisor based in Asia for over 12 years. Join us every week to fast track your personal growth so you can meet the ever increasing demands of the company or companies you are passionately building. Time waits for no one, so let's get started now. So I'm here with Kate, and we're going to be talking about social media and how it's changing and more. So thank you for taking the time to talk with me, Kate. I'm glad to have you here all the way from Ukraine. Why don't we have you tell everyone what you do right now and what makes you a good person to talk about this topic? Thank you for inviting me. I'm really excited to be here. So my name is Kate. I'm a chief business development officer and co-founder of post to plan a smart social media and messenger marketing platform that allows users to create, schedule, and promote their content on social media and messengers. Why did you feel like social media and content was important? Well, content was always important and probably for brands, for businesses, it's the main uh, source where the budget should be put on because customers can always feel whether the content is real, whether the content is a high quality and you should really pay attention to the content. It is a very saturated market for these kinds of services, especially B2B SaaS. What is it specifically that makes your company different? Well, we are building a marketing automation platform that's not only about uh, content scheduling and content management, it's more about marketing in general and automation marketing. So um, it would really be helpful for small business owners to develop and build a marketing campaign them- themselves without spending like thousands and hundreds of thousand dollars on that. Uh, this platform would help them to create content, make it really nice to find their target audience and uh, promote their content to their target audience. So how can a company find their target audience? Company should analyze their product first and then they should analyze their target audience who would need that, what is the age uh, of their customers, what is their location, what they are worried about, what do they need. It is really important for a brand when they analyze their target audience to show that they know what is customer is worried about, right, and to show that they can really help them. So not just something what is on surface, but something deeper what could help them. Once they identify who the target audience is, how do they figure out how to understand them at a deeper level? There are different ways to analyze. And usually you would have customers feedback about your product or about the product of your competitors. The next really important stage, analyzing your competitors to not copy them, but to see previous customer experience with product which is like yours. So you can see what they are worried about, what they're asking about, what they liked or what they didn't like, right? So you could check the reviews and stuff and then you can build your product like that. So I would say it's really important to get a feedback of users and customers 
about product like that. So if a company is trying to develop a content strategy and manage marketing and create automations for all of that, it sounds like the stage we're talking about is one in which they may not have a platform yet or they may not have users yet. Yeah, so if you're asking about like developing a content strategy and when you know your users, right, when you know your target audience, their needs and worries, you should have a target, like a point or aim with your content. What are you trying to achieve with this content? So first, when brand starts, probably you need to let users know about your brand. So they should know about your product and they might not be aware even about the problem they have. So in the first like stage, you should bring this point that probably they might have that problem and there is a product which could solve it. So first they know about your product, then they get interested and like they trust your product. Then they are purchasing it and like trying it is the third step. And at the last step, they love your product. They are ready to recommend it, share and stay with you all the time. So I would describe it like that. And according to these steps, I would create a content plan. All right. So let's go deeper into the content and the strategy based on this target audience. You were mentioning off air about Gen Z is different than millennials, is different than boomers. And how can a company know the right channel to approach for their content strategy based on the generation of user that they're targeting? You can analyze who your target audience is and what is their age. And uh, Gen Z is like a huge buyer's generation. So probably products should focus on them. And it is really hard because it has been changing because before the buyer customer journey changed and it became really short, like from few weeks to now, like few seconds or even like few minutes when uh, somebody could see something on social media, like had few seconds to check your page and then analyze and decide if they need it or not. If they're going to follow and like look what is going to be next or just skip it. Okay. So why do you think there's this huge difference between uh, the way people think about these products and, and how they make their decisions? Millennials are more likely to analyze like data, analytics, I mean, numbers, right? And they need more time to analyze. If we talk about Gen Z, they are more about emotional marketing and like emotional purchases so they are more about to buy something from a brand they follow and if this brand brings some emotions to them and specific value not just something what is on surface right but something what could create the feeling that like oh they understand me i they they know what i did so i will most likely buy it why do you think there's this psychological difference between these two generations I belong to Generation Z and we were born at the time when you started creating your personal brand from the second you joined social media. Everyone was talking about marketing and you didn't realize that you were analyzing competitors, different social media pages. You were analyzing brands and it's already like everywhere. So we were born at that time when it was easy to share your opinion to like thousands of people and you could see that it had a huge influence. I had a computer in my home when I was six and that was lucky. My first phone, I was 17. And smartphones didn't exist until I was like 21, 22. I feel like my generation, we're much more used to, like I'll believe what I can see, what I can taste, what I can touch, right? We're, we're much more like, if I'm gonna meet you, I wanna meet you and shake your hand. Where Gen Z, I feel like is born with a phone in their hands. I feel like they have a life that exists in the internet where our generation, we have a life and then there's the internet. Yeah, I agree with you, especially now. Uh, you know, about this, I was thinking when I was at the university, I would like trust everything what I see online, right? When you search for some information, like I thought it was really reliable. And then it happened, like, yeah, of course, like we could find something and we could share that. And I would most more likely to 
trust something what I see online than like if somebody on the street would tell me. So, and then like when you realize that these websites and this information is created by people like we are and nobody checks it, there is the problem on social media and in, on the internet that like people, especially Generation D, they, they trust everything what they see online. It's really not a good idea to just trust anything that you see. And it's really important to do research. Five years ago, I would have just read the news. And if it felt like a website that seemed legitimate, you would trust it, right? Mm -hmm. But now you have to go, well, who owns this website? And then when you look at an article and they cite sources, you have to see who are they citing? Why are they citing them? Are they connected in any way? And the things being cited, if it's a research study, who funded the research study? I feel like Gen Z living through their emotions are heading towards a train wreck. Like, I feel like it's really important for people to really focus on researching and getting to know the things behind what they see in order to make a decision. But it's not what I'm seeing with Gen Z. So yeah, that's what I, we were talking about. Like you're more likely to analyze stuff like that, right? When you see the information you're checking, you're like researching. And for us, it's probably not like that. So is it easy to manipulate Gen Z then, you think? It's not about manipulation. Maybe it's about an influence, what a social media creates. Right. And that's why there were a lot of like problems with the appearance. These teenagers, they had problems. And also there are these challenges on TikTok, like what you see on social media is fake, which was really important. So I think this problem like is all about that we trust what we see online. So if people trust what they see online, but they shouldn't trust what they see online, and yet they do it anyways, the line between influence and manipulation is actually very blurry. There is this influence marketing where they recommend products. And in the beginning, it was really successful when somebody famous recommends you a product, you would most likely buy it if you like this person. So now people wouldn't trust it micro bloggers become more successful because they are more real and there is this tendency to trust brands who provide more natural information more real not that perfect but yeah closer to reality and also they would trust brands who has a person behind it so they know somebody who runs the brand i definitely see that happening i know a lot of ceos are visible on twitter now or Instagram or whatever it is. My team wanted me to be visible and I'm not a social media person. I despise social media. That's why I decided to do the podcast because for me, this is something where if someone wants to know about my company and through that decide they want to know who I am to know if they can trust my company, they've got hours upon hours of content where they can hear me talking with guests. So yeah, I think it's really important to have a person behind the brand because people trust people, right? They want to see who is behind this. When a brand is setting up a content strategy for social media, how can they manage it so that there is a person, but there's also the brand? Is it something where the founder of the company has their own social media stuff and they're promoting the company's posts? Or if the CEO is interviewed, the company is promoting the CEO? Like, so how, how do you manage this personal versus professional promotion? So I think it is important for a person who runs a brand, right? That it should be separated and they should promote their personality and they promote their values so that people could see that probably their values are going to coincide and it's more likely they put these values in the, the product, in their business, in their attitude to the customers and stuff. So it's more about bringing your personal values. That's why people are more likely to trust you, right? When they see your interests are like the same with my interests. So it is important to show that. That's how you get loyalty, right? If you know that this is what Gen Z want, all you have to do is make them trust you, but you don't have to actually feel that way or think that way. You don't need to actually have those values. It seems like you could manipulate them into believing you have those values. Am I wrong? You should be really good in manipulation then because people can feel that and people are not stupid. They can feel when you're real and when you're not. I'm pretty sure like it's going to fail for sure. I think business and romance are very much the same uh, in different ways. I think that when you're in a relationship with someone, if you just wait long enough, if they're faking some part of their personality, inevitably you will see that 
that thing come out. Business is, is the same way. Like if you're in business with someone, eventually they'll show their real self because you can only pretend to be somebody or something for so long until it gets so tiring that you just give it up. And if we talk about a company, right? When a problem arises, right? With one or two customers, like something was not delivered or something was like came broken, right? For example, you can see how they fix that problem, how they solve it. Businesses should be really careful with that because social media has a huge power when you can like in few seconds share your opinion, share your experience on social media and everyone will see that. They will see the reviews, they will see the comments. If I'm a customer and they did bad with me, right? I'm going to share my experience. So brands should really pay attention to that, how they solve problems, how they communicate with people. Yeah. I think customer service is really important. It's something that I'm going to be working on this year for my company. So I've been thinking about how to automate customer service as much as possible. But as a user, I find that when I'm forced to talk to a chatbot and there's no way to get to a human, I get annoyed because those chatbots suck. Me too. Do you think Gen Z wants a human or do you think they want a chatbot? You know, it is annoying to search for information in those like frequently asked questions. They would try to send you there, right? Like, oh, if you have a problem, you type it and they would recommend you like, oh, go to this page, go to this article, like to read and yeah, find the problem. It is really annoying. And I would say yes about Gen Z because they have really short span of attention of focusing on something so it becomes like really hard and i would most likely to watch a video about it right somebody explaining it to me than just reading and searching for information that's an interesting idea using video to answer questions yeah i do find sometimes like let's say i'm playing a video game for example and i want to know oh like i'm stuck what do i do next 10 15 years ago you would search on google like for a walkthrough of the game and someone has a text walkthrough that's like 100 pages long and you'll Look for the section that you want to look in, right? Mm -hmm. But now you can go to YouTube and people have videos of them playing the entire game broken down by chapters and you can search sometimes just for the specific problem you have and there will be a video about it that's like two or three minutes long. I agree. I think that video is a very interesting concept for customer service. Yeah, actually video content becomes really important right now for like everything for social media, explaining stuff. Businesses should really work hard on developing and then maybe like starting from customer success, from support to like brand itself, explaining some moments and sharing some information through videos. Yeah, my marketing director and I've been thinking about what kind of content I can create using video myself so that anyone who comes to the website will be able to see like a short video of me explaining who we are, what we're doing, why we're different than companies like Slack, etc. So I'm definitely going to invest in a lot of these kinds of videos. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, and uh, you could put them, you know, on different like stages of customer journey from the very like first step they re register there is one video then they come to like a different point right then you could show a different video about like how to solve that then when they come like to each problem there should be a different video for that not all, everything at once right so they find what they need at the moment they need it. And they get to hear about it from the founder. Yeah, that's awesome. They would really like that you spend your time to explain something to them. I think it's really important because a lot of software these days are becoming more complicated. When we first saw SaaS companies being developed, a company would solve a problem. And now you're seeing a platform solve multiple problems. And sometimes it's not obvious that those problems can be solved or that this platform offers multiple solutions. And so I think it's important to make it as easy as possible for people to understand the full value of what you provide, not only before the sale, but also after the sale in order to keep them engaged. I agree with that. I would say that like getting somebody registered and purchased your product is just the beginning. There is a different question about retaining customers, yeah, communicating with them, solving their problems. You were saying that Gen Z has a shorter attention span, but they love videos. I know from YouTube's algorithms, after three minutes, 70% of them have already dropped off. What's the point in creating video content if you can't get the point across in less than two minutes? There shouldn't be anything they don't need. You have to solve their problem like right now. So if you have a 
topic, you should be able to open this topic in like this two, three minutes and that will be enough. What about audio only? Brands should like have different channels and different kinds of channels because according to preferences, of customers like right some of them like to watch youtube more some of them like to listen to something while they are in a car right or like on the way to work or something like that so i believe that you should develop your brand in diff on different channels like with visual content video content audio content everything is good but it should be on different platform and determined to different target audiences because on instagram there is one one target audience there is a different age of them. They like more visual, right? So on YouTube, there should be a different content because probably there is like a different audience with different preferences. You cannot share the same content to all of the social media because it's not going to be successful. Is there anything I haven't asked you so far that you'd like to get into? Brands about 10 years ago would really have success when they had their like pictures, videos, everything would be perfect really good prepared content and they were successful but now people are most likely to like trust something what they could like see more in natural environment you know like you can see the picture of my brother and i when we we're kids behind me right yeah i thought about that that's cute <laughs> I didn't realize because I, I had my window minimized so that I could see half the screen and then the documents on the other side. And then I closed the document because I just stopped asking like questions really. And I maximized the browser and then I said, oh crap, she could see the picture of my brother and I. And I didn't say anything about it until now, until you said something. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to say something. So how do you think the pandemic has changed social media? And has the pandemic changed so social media for Gen Z differently than millennials? everyone started developing a TikTok. And that was a golden like period for TikTok because everyone felt they could became, become famous just with the help of their videos. And they had a lot of time to create the videos and content. Also, brands had a lot of time to create content for their customers. So I would say uh, that was the time when content became more like of a higher quality and more important. Do you think TikTok is going to remain important going forward in 2021 and 2022? And do you have anyone, uh, any of your customers looking at Clubhouse? And do you have any sort of automations or things planned for Clubhouse? About TikTok, I think it's going to be successful, of course. And according to the last news, Instagram is going to change the format of the content. They're going to shift to videos more, right? So it's not going to be just like a square picture. It's going to be like full screen videos and that's why they have those reels now so videos become like really important because customers can accept videos as we discussed before like easily about automation uh we unfortunately we don't have but we're developing it right now for uh, tiktok for the clubhouse no unfortunately we don't have that but yeah there are a lot of analogs like even instagram created something kind of clubhouse like rooms you can create rooms and like talk and discuss stuff so yeah we'll see how it will work so how can people follow up with you well you could find me on linkedin my name is katerina suhenka also you could search post a plan online and you yeah always could join and if you have any questions you could ask our support team or find me on social media facebook and linkedin all right great so if you like this episode definitely reach out with katarina i'll provide her links in the show notes don't forget that entrepreneurship is a marathon not a sprint so take care of yourself every day and if you're building a company and trying to focus on gen z definitely learn about their psychology because it is vastly different than the psychology of millennials and Gen Xers, uh, as I've come to discover for myself. So thank you, Kate. Thank you so much. 